Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So in this video we should be able to get a preview look of the new dungeon, the Imperial Citadel. We should be able to see what kind of areas will be there and what kind of enemies we'll be facing. How much? We have yet to see. Again, this is all spoilers for the next big update, most likely coming on April the 23rd. So we have gotten to week four of the adventures in Wild Space, the new campaign, and we're just about to get to milestone four, which will unlock us a few things. We just need to hand in this last repeatable quest. You'll have to do a whole bunch in order to get this far. And with that, we are now at milestone four, where we claim our Greater Enchanting Stone choice pack. You can just go to open it and you have to choose either. Now, additionally, we do unlock some things in the campaign store. We will be able to buy the Astral Beacon of Luminescence, which will be one of the things we need to purchase the new artifact. And I will do that later. Not in this video, unfortunately, as I have to do a lot of grinding. In terms of enchantments, we can purchase the new combat enchantment, Divine Aegis. We'll be able to test that out on a healer as that's what it seems to be directed for. In terms of the weapons, we'll be able to buy the offhand weapons of all the classes. They are bound to account on pickup, so you can purchase them on your main character and move them to alts if you wanted to. And then for accessories, we unlock the neck and waist piece for the artifact set to go with that artifact. Again, I will purchase them later. I need to do a lot of farming to get the reagents required to get everything. So I'll leave that most likely to another video. We do unlock with the Arena of Blood store here, the ability to also buy the spikes of the Astral Beacon. So yes, we can this week fully purchase the new artifact and see what will be required to say upgrade it. Again, that'll be in another video. Now we do also unlock some campaign tasks. So we have here the ability to get to the second task and we can get heart of a dying star and meteorite fragments so let's go and do this and we can collect our reward so that just puts the items in our inventory here and they are bound to a character unfortunately we can purchase more of these materials but they will be required to upgrade the artifact set Again, I'll cover more of that later in a separate video. Otherwise, we do unlock the second boon point here, requiring just these currencies here. So we'll progress that, claiming that extra boon point, and the next one we can obtain when we get to the fifth milestone. So now let's continue the storyline and actually unlock the preview to the new dungeon, where we should be able to see pretty much everything there. With regards to the previous modules, we've had that. First of all, we get the quest, pay your respects. We speak to the princess here, completing the quest, and now she gives us its time. From here, we need to go back to the moon dancer, where we speak to the ambassador, and then we have to go to a bunch of different locations and speak to these NPCs. I assume we're getting them ready for some mission that we're going to go on. Potentially the Imperial Citadel. Speak to this ghost and then speak to her. And that's the quest done. Back at Vakov's tower. Complete the quest and we get another one. Sabotage at the Citadel. We have to take the royal ring. And now we have to go to the Imperial Citadel. We finally unlock this location. And here we are. Definitely looks a bit different than I thought. This I assume being the tower. Beaming the Star of Xaraxxus. We need to get explosive runes from this crate and now go to plant the runes. So we do have a bunch of astral elves here. It's a bit of like a garden park area with all these trees. Definitely giving like Sharandar and Vault of Stars vibes, that's for sure. But we just go, we kill off the enemies. And once at one of the locations, we plant these explosive runes. I suppose maybe we're going to blow this whole place up, at least disable something. I'm assuming that's the Tower of Light. So we'll just continue going to our next groups of enemies, killing them, and then placing these ruins on the ground. We head down here, kill these elves, some more groups here too. I assume you can probably in the dungeon just group them all up if you have a tank and kill them. But yeah, it really depends how tanky these guys are. 
So yeah, big courtyard here with some water. We need to kill some Kuatua. All right, place our third rune. Then head to the other side of this area. I mean, yeah, they definitely did a good job with the art. And we can place our final rune just here. And now we'll head to the sparkly line and we need to reach the citadel. So that's the tower we need to get there. Oh, this could well be our first boss. We have the guardian. So let's go and kill him. Big shambling mound. Interesting. Again, we're not 100% sure what will be just part of the story and what will be part of the actual dungeon. This could well be, yes, part of the dungeon and you have to beat a shambling mound kind of mini boss here. We speak to the NPC, the priest, giving him the royal ring. And we need to wait for the general to show up. And we let them speak to each other. So now we probably get teleported deeper into the citadel. We can search these treasure, treasure chests. Other stuff. So there's just normal stuff in these chests. But we go and then we are entering the citadel. Okay, cool. Now we need to approach the astral font. So this is most likely where the second boss is going to be as per this achievement list. So we very likely killed the shambling mound, which is the first boss. And then we're on to the second boss, which is the Zodar with the stay out of the light and don't drink the water where we're at the astral font. So that's here. We approach it, interact with this. We get teleported in and now we have Prince Gazelleth right here. Ouch, what was that? If we go near it, we take damage over time. That's the astral burn. So you need to not touch that. I assume it's going to be hard or something. So we need to fight Prince Gazelleth. Let's go up to him, see what he can do. He teleports. Didn't move anywhere I'm out of his area. That's an interesting ability. What's that going to do, huh? Ouch. This is the cone attack that a lot of the astral elves have. And now he's summoning in some enemies. All right, and disappearing. Okay, we finished fighting him. So we just got him to a certain amount of hit points. And then we get some adds spawning in. We need to defend General Anor. She's just here. Help, I'm being attacked. So what is she doing? I'm not entirely sure, but she must be channeling something. Let's make sure the enemies don't get close to her and then she can fill up that progress bar, whatever she has. All right, so she made a portal and we can get out of here. So that is like a preview of the new dungeon with I'm guessing the first boss and the second boss. They definitely didn't show everything. So they're doing similar like with the demon web pits. We got say, as far as Gromp, the second boss, but we never got to the part where I assume we'll be going higher up in the citadel. We can just take a look around here. We can just flee as per what the quest says, but then we're leaving this area. So yeah, I assume there's a lot more to it. But yeah, this is the astral font. So I'm assuming this is the arena where the Zod are. The second boss stay out of the light refracted light is probably one of the boss mechanics and the astral font is this thing here and yes we are in the citadel of light as per that text cool they definitely did a good job with the art i like the look of the place but we didn't really get to see much with regards to bosses and mechanics and things like that we did face prince Zelath for just a little bit nothing much and i don't think we'll be facing him here for very long he'll most likely switch over to a zodar and then we'll have to face him again later on when we get further into the dungeon again i hope that this dungeon does come out on the preview test server before this launches to live so we can check things out so once again i will be coming out with a video to cover the combat enchantment for healers and also then the artifact set. A special thank you once again to all of these channel members for your added support. I'm going to see you guys around. Goodbye for now.